We waiting for you to be quiet on the set. Excuse me. I don't think that'll be fun, Erica. You just look boring. Yo, fuck ass boy. <laughs> thank you, Derek. Oh, well, not thank me, huh? Thank you, too. <laughs> You can turn this off so we ain't sponsoring nobody. No, it don't, it don't matter. No, yes, fuck please. that. Oh. Ain't getting no free sponsorships. Whole time, Derek was like, it'll been tight if you if you had like a little uh like side um side bar or something like that, and had you some bourbon sitting there with. You. I got some bourbon back there. But it was like we ain't we ain't. That's right. Ain't nobody pay for uh bourbon sponsorships, so. Back. It's always funny when somebody drinking mic'd up. Oh, you can hear it. <laughs> no, stop. You stupid. I know you stupid. And that's how you interview in the day. You are childish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get my mood together. I'm sorry. Let's go. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Quiet on set. Quiet on the set. Does that mean too? Me too. Me too. All right. All right. Here we go. Um... So, today we have Mike Andre, a.k.a. Mike Harris, uh, a.k.a. B-Goat, formerly known as. Gang, gang. So, uh, just want to start off by saying, appreciate you, brother, for doing this interview. No doubt, um, no doubt. Regardless of this, whatever that little noise is that keeps happening. The little can thing. In the studio, that's going to be annoying if it's the whole time. But regardless, so, we're just going to dive right into it, bro. What's happening? Uh... So give us a little bit of background about yourself and what it is that you do. Um, photography related, I do a lot of stuff. I'm a dad. Um, I do the NFT thing. Uh, I'm a real estate agent. I own some real estate. Um, and I'm, I'm a photographer too. I tried to do video for a second, but then Nick was like, yeah, you suck. So I stopped. I did not say that. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I do, I do a little bit of all of that. Um, I would say... Most of my um, financial success comes from the photography field, and uh, most of my fun success comes from being a dad. Got you. That's that's a way to intro. So you're from Indiana? No, I'm from Harvey. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, uh, I am from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, a little little park called Hallville. Uh, they renamed it Near River West now. I like telling everybody this story. So 15 years from now, when they're like, oh, you're from Near River West? Near River West. I'm like, no, I'm from Hallville. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Born and okay. raised on the west side of Indianapolis. Um, yeah. Was that a short answer? I'm no, sorry. That's, that was good. That was yeah. a thorough answer. I just don't want to be short with, I don't want to be short with you because, you know, we go way back and you know this information. But I want your people to know the information. So the people will, you know, this is this is kind of like the formalities anyway yeah. in the beginning. You gotcha. know, we go. So people, I, feel, just I know, know we're gonna have the the conversation when it gets it. Just people, me, frame me. All right. Oh my god. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he never does this in real life. <laughs> Not in real life. I'm I'm super professional. Oh sometimes. man. So uh, you just your intro alone had uh, had a couple of questions. So in that list of things, mm -hmm. I. All of those sound like things that you do for yourself. So, have you not been in corporate America, or what's your uh, journey with? Did you work for anybody at some point? Because I know gotcha. we just did one with Erica, and she said mm -hmm. that she used to work for somebody, and then she gave herself a time period to leave. So, how's yeah. that? So, uh, crazy enough, I had a whole corporate job. Um, I was in college with a corporate corporate America job. Thought I was going to have this job for the rest of my life. Retire pension, all that other good stuff. Um, I was getting paid maybe $35,000, $40,000 a year while I was still in college. I was like, I am winning, right? <laughs> and then um, it was a poor logistics company. And I saved this logistics company like half a million dollars. And uh, around the same time, I was picking up photography, but it was more fun than anything else. Um, saved them half a million dollars. And in my mind, if I save you half a million dollars, you're going to cut me a <laughs> check, right? They gave me a $4,000 bonus. And then once I realized that corporate America doesn't really care about its workers, I put my two weeks in, literally two weeks after the four week, I mean, the $4,000 bonus, and uh, went all photography. Um, and that was seven years ago, eight years ago, seven years ago. What year were we in? 2022. 
seven years ago. Yeah, so. It's so around 2015? Yep, yep. So it's been all me since then. Uh, got my real estate license maybe two years after that. So I've been a real estate agent for five years. Mm -hmm. um, practicing just to be my own investor, just learning more about the industry. Um, but then it turned into its own business as well. So yep, gotcha. all me. I don't really mess with the slave owners. <laughs> hey, look, hey, that's that's the that's the beauty of this interview is that this is very candid and open, and that's your. I don't lie, people. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to put that one direct. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so that that jumps straight into like my next question is just like, can you tell us about like the importance of multiple streams of income. Like you said, most of your money comes from mm -hmm. photography. I know you enjoy photography, but you have a very diverse portfolio yeah. of income. So for sure. Um so I I don't know how to say this in the most uh I don't even know what to call the most responsible or most uh formal. I don't know. The way I'm gonna say it is this I make money from photography, but if I break my right hand today, I cannot continue being a photographer for the next month, two months, however long it takes for me to heal my hand so that money would stop, right? Um, I look at, that's that's my active income is my photography money. Um, NFTs is, I consider an investment, but it's super, I'm super active still. Like I still have to consistently research, consistently buy, sell NFTs for that to work. Um, real estate is more so um, generational wealth, right? Um, my real estate investments are all buy and holds. I don't look to flip any houses because um, I want the monthly residual income and I want to be able to pass that on to my kids once I pass away. So um, I think every stream of income should serve its own purpose, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, you should have active. You should have something that makes it, makes money by itself. You should have just different forms because you never know what's going to stop and when it's going to stop. That's wisdom right there. That's, that's, I can't say, I can't say, uh, bars like shout out to uh, <laughs> Dorito, Dave, David Chase, but hey, yeah, that's, I just, hey, look, I just, that's, that's knowledge. That's yeah. knowledge being dropped. You got to have multiple streams of income, but just not any random streams. They got to be on purpose. Yeah, for have sure. a reason for each one. For sure. 100%. Um, I know you and I were talking the other day about um, hypotheticals and where we would be um, if I had kids at different age or if you didn't have kids mm -hmm. uh, and or the timeline of having kids and the family. Like, uh, can you just talk about how um, mentality wise, how like your mentality changed becoming a family man, becoming a mm -hmm. father, a dad, like you mentioned at first, um, about to get married mm -hmm. um, later this year. Like September, how has... Yeah that changed your outlook? So, so it, it changed my, my way of thinking, right? My whole thought process. Because in 2015, when I was going to quit my job was the same year my son was actually born. Mm -hmm. And my thought process was, I'm going to spend 40 hours a week at this job to make not a lot of money. So I'm, I'm going to be away from my kid a lot, not having all the money, and I'm not going to have anything to pass on to them. So. In my mind, I thought, how can I buy my time back? And the way I bought my time back was to make more money in a shorter amount of time, right? So my kid, my first kid, Mikey, he kind of motivated me to, to change my thought process because everything I did moving from there, moving forward, was for him, right? Mm. So um, that's, that's kind of it, right? He, just, he, <laughs> he motivated me to just change my thought process because I wanted to spend more time with him. And I wasn't just responsible for myself. I was responsible for him too. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, my parents both work 40 hours a week jobs, um, sometimes having part-time jobs. And I had amazing parents, but yeah, I, could, I wish I could have spent more time with my parents. I wish we had a little bit more money. And the only way to do that is to make more money in less time. So, Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. It just, that's a refreshing perspective, you know, like, uh, especially, um, when people think having children at a younger age, younger 20s, uh, maybe even higher teens, 1920, like people think mm -hmm. like it's all bad, but it sounds like that's no, a man, lot my, of positive my, in the mental switch. My up. thought process was, I can't dunk you guys, but my, <laughs> in my mind, I want to be able to dunk on my son and it count, right? So when he's 18, <laughs> 
when he's 18, I'll be a fresh, like, I'll be a fresh 40, right? So I can still get up there. I don't want to be an old dad not being able to enjoy my kids. I want to be able to go out there and experience the basketball and football games and be the person jumping up, yelling at people and whatnot. And you can't do that and not be able to defend yourself being a senior citizen with an 18-year-old kid. So, um, so it happened like that. And uh, lucky for me, I got um, the love of my life pregnant um, twice. So it, it worked, right? It wasn't this, this random person. Well, at the time she was random, but now she's not random. Um, JK, I love you, see her. Um, yeah, my bad. Next question, bro. I was, I was rambling. Oh. <laughs> Hey, at me next time when we talk about <laughs> being old with an 18 year <laughs> Oh, man. Um, so as far as on, along the same lines of mentality, mm -hmm. um, I know you said that change after your son. If you could take your 29-year-old self now and go back to your 19-year-old self 10 years ago and tell him any piece of advice, what, what would that be? Um... The, oh, just a single piece of advice? Yes, the most important thing. To it tell. would be something that I learned probably in like the last two or three years, which has changed my life dramatically, which is to add value to whoever, whomever, whenever, as much as possible. Because if you add value to people um, and not look for anything in return, more value just comes back to you. It's just the, just, just the way the world works. Um, adding it, free from, I'm free game Fridays all the time, right? If you know something, share it, because people that share more receive more. So I'm just a, a add value type of person. So me at 19, adding value to people, not being stingy, because me at 19 was a very selfish person. Like if I knew something, I didn't want to tell anybody because I saw that as competition. Mm -hmm. Me at 29 is if I know something, I want you to learn it too, because competition is good, right? Like competition is healthy. It's only going to make me better. Mm -hmm. So add yeah. value. You you segue perfectly into the, the next hey. segment. You know, we talk about adding value okay. all the time. Um, you actually added a lot of value to my life in, in, in more ways than one, uh, but especially with the book, The Go-Giver, that yeah. specifically talks about um, adding value to people. Um, I would recommend everybody read that book, The Go-Giver, by... Um, don't ask me no um, author's name. The book is amazing. <laughs> the Go-Giver is in my top three. Um, yeah. Don't ask me his name. But it's an don't amazing, ask me his name. It's by book. Bob Berg and John That is Mann. definitely right. That's just his name. Yes. <laughs> that is his name. Bob, yeah. you're looking out. If, if, so in that book, since that's a book that we both love, that's on adding value, you just mentioned that. What was, uh, you just shared like your biggest takeaway in that, in a, in a book that's entirely about mm. um the importance adding of adding value. What was the biggest takeaway from that book? Um, I would say the adding value part without looking for something in return, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people will give something expecting something in return. A lot of people will give information expecting someone to automatically like give back to you immediately. And sometimes um, the way someone can add value back into your life isn't immediate. It might not even be through them. It might be through somebody else, right? Mm. So always add value and not expect anything. Hope for everything, but not expect anything. Um, mm. It's probably my biggest takeaway from the book because a lot of, like, again, a lot of people always give looking to receive, but if you just give, give, give as much as you can and not worry about receiving, you'll just receive that much more. I don't know how to explain it. Other than that, so. <laughs> it just works. It just happens. I'm about to say it, it, it happens. Like, <laughs> I, I, pra I start practicing the adding value and not looking for anyone to give me any handouts or anything. And I've had the most successful, like financial, mental, emotional, everything success since then. It's, it's just been the best just by adding value to people who either want it or don't want it. Mm -hmm. Either don't need to just adding value when I can. So, Gotcha. I mean, major shout out to Mike. Mike added value. Mike helped me drive from Indiana to Atlanta to move from the ninth floor to the third floor, no elevators. My so I wasn't going to talk about it, but since it was <laughs> my man's drives a Camaro and I'm not a tall guy at all, right? I am like totally average height. That is the worst car ever in life to drive. I don't care if you're driving down the block to your grandmama's house. I don't care if you're driving across the country. Don't drive a Camaro. Rent a car or fly <laughs> that car somewhere else. 
My bad. That's all. So I know. I felt like you had to get that off your chest. I did because that it was that shit was terrible. <laughs> Wait, I, I wasn't worried about moving up the nine, the down the nine floors, up the three floors, but the, that drop. And terrible. I mean, just just so the people know, uh, Mike literally gives without uh, one anything in return. I tried to offer a lot of different conversation in exchange for it, and he he just glad to help. Like that's. Yeah. That's a, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. You said people expect stuff back. Yeah. That's the biggest difference is when you just help people. I know you you help people with photography, set, build, like anything you're around. Mike is somebody who will help you if he's just there. He's somebody you can call for help and never ask for anything. And I guess that the principle of it is true. Because I mean, in yeah. that same regard, Mike could call me at any point and say he needed something and I'm there because, or if I just saw that he needed something and I could do it, it's done because. Right. That's just the type of person that you want to help. <laughs> I would also say um, I am a well-known asshole, so I have to do some nice things in the world to balance out my, um, my asshole. So yeah, I gotta I gotta keep it a little even. A little some bit. people say he's a Aquarius. I knew it. No, yeah, I, mean, I, I am who I am. I have no place. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, let's let's uh, pivot a little bit um, huh? to the photography standpoint. Um, I know you just had like a, a personal project you took on for inspiration sessions. Mm -hmm. Like, can you tell us how um, you went about the inspiration shoots and like why why you feel like it's important to stay inspired as a creative? For sure. Um, so I would say like all of, wait, we're 2022 right now? Yeah. So all of 2021, I just feel like a stagnant photographer. Like, yeah, I was still getting booked. Yeah, I was still making money, but like my work was not, like 2019, 2020, my work was epic in my opinion. Like my lighting and concept, everything was just amazing. But 2021, I just felt really uninspired. I picked up more real estate. I picked up more business on the NFT, everything else, but I didn't really focus on photography anymore. So I brought the inspo sessions in because it was photographers and light setups and models that I admire. that I was like, man, if I could recreate, not even recreate, but just be inspired by those images to make them my own, maybe I might bring some life back into my, just me personally, my own creativity. Um, not so much to make the money because the, the the prices was more than half my normal session. I just mm -hmm. wanted people to book it and have fun. Any person could book it, have fun and, and just be dope with it, so. And have fun. I think that's, yeah. I think as creators, we lose that a lot, especially in the social media age. It's right. create, create, create to post, to, to make it for the algorithm, to. For it to um, last for 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, Everybody forgets that you did the next day. We create imagine, we're slaves to the algorithm. <laughs> imagine creating the most fire content of your life the day before the Oscars. <laughs> oh, then it's completely it's gone. The like it's, it's gone. Like nobody, nobody's <laughs> gonna see it because everything is Will Smith, Will Smith, Will Smith, Will Smith. Yeah. So that's why creating it for fun matters so much more than creating it for Instagram. Mm -hmm. And that's why the inspo session was so important to me because it was more for me than for anybody else to, to motivate myself. That's, that's perfect, that's dope. Yeah. Um, if, if you had any piece of advice for someone who um, maybe feels undervalued, like you mentioned at first in your uh, corporate job, or mm -hmm. maybe, maybe they've just been there for a while and they have some multiple streams of income and they, mm -hmm. they want to leave the, uh, the corporate environment, or maybe it's not even corporate, maybe they work at McDonald's and they just have a creative passion or maybe they're getting into real estate or whatever. How do you, what advice would you have for someone who wants to leave their job to work for themselves? Um, mm, so, <laughs> depends, right? So, I, if you would have asked me this question four years ago, five years ago, mm. I would have said, just do it, right? Just quit your job because you, if you keep planning to do it, you'll never do it. Mm -hmm. But the moment you take action, you force yourself to be better. That was me four years ago, right? The smarter the smarter 29-year-old <laughs> me is going to say, first of all, don't quit your job until A, you own a house, right? It is extremely difficult to own a property if you do not have two years tax returns, if you don't have two years bank statements showing that you have legit money coming coming in, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's extremely difficult in the first two years of being a, a self-employed 
or what is it? It's self employed, right? Yeah, self employed. Yeah, yeah. Self employed. Um, so don't quit your job yet until you got your set yourself set, right? If you work a 40 hour a week job and you really want to be a creative, you really want to be great, you will put another 15 to 20 hours in into your craft after that 40 hours. Mm-hmm. Like if you got kids, you'll do it when they sleep. My first my first four or five years, I legit only edited between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. every day. Oh man. <laughs> like at, like every day and I was up at like 6 30, 7 o'clock again to getting back to the daycare or wherever he was where he was going to my grandma's house at the time, one or two. But to get him wherever he needs to go right after that. Like if you really want to be great, then you'll be you'll find a way to be great. But don't just go quit your job because you don't like your boss. That was a dumb decision on my part. It worked yeah. out, but it made my life that much more difficult because I had to wait the I had to stay in apartments for two mm-hmm. extra years that I didn't want to stay in apartments. I can afford a house, but banks don't care. Nobody that has money they'll give you or lend you doesn't care that you have the money, right? Mm-hmm. They want to see that you are able to pay them back. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to do that without bank statements, tax returns, and whatnot. That is a different person. I haven't heard that. I, yeah. I hadn't even thought about that. Like, that's... Like, until I started purchasing real estate, I didn't mm-hmm. realize, like, in my mind, if I got $100,000, I could buy anything I want. Mm-hmm. But in reality, you can't go get a mortgage. Just because you got $100,000, you can't get a mortgage because you didn't file your taxes that said you got $100,000. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you can't go get a mortgage, and you don't want to just give somebody a hundred thousand dollars for their house. You want your hundred thousand dollars, and you want the house. Yeah. So you gotta get a mortgage. You can't get that mortgage without paperwork. No, and that's what a lot of us do. Do be legit. Do your taxes. Report the money you make. Be legit. I'm not saying <laughs> it's okay to cut corners, but <laughs> pay your taxes, right? But yeah. Nobody from the IRS watched this video. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hey, look, we 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 we've had uh a lot of gems drop right here, man. We're right at about time on this. So any last thoughts that you want to share about you or advice you want to give, anything you got coming up in the works you want people to know about? Um, I have all of those things, right? But okay. but First of all, follow me on Instagram. That's the coolest social media thing right now. Still I'm link all of your yeah, socials. Yeah. Mike Andre Photo, right? Um, so follow me. You'll stay tuned to everything I have going on on there. Um, other than that, first of all, I want to say thank you, Nick, for having me here and asking me all these dope questions that you already knew the answer to. So now they can have the answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then secondly, just be great if you are creative, if you want to be in a real estate, if you have a corporate America job, if you have a corporate America job, just be great at that. Be great at whatever you're doing, no matter what it is, because anything less than greatness is a lack of effort, right? As long as you're doing the best you could possibly be doing, you're you're great at it, right? You're, you're being great. Set your own standards of greatness, and then you can reach them just by giving maximum effort. Hey, what better way to end the interview with, with than with that? I mean, Oh, wait. Do still this one time for one time. RNS, RNDRT. Holler if you need me. If you don't need me, don't holler. <laughs> Drop some money. I'm so, sorry. You go. Throw up, throw up Harvey one last <laughs> time for him. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs>